Hey guys, so one of the easiest ways to get over your fear of snake bites is to get bitten. Yeah, that's good. The most important thing when you're keeping snakes, you see you're always here, it's like, oh, it's gonna bite you, so you're not gonna enjoy it. Well, it's really important to realize that getting bitten, it's not that big of a deal. You know, and even being eaten, it's not that bad, guys. I'm just saying, don't try it, but uh, if it happens, it's not the end of the world. Thumbs, it's what's for dinner. <laughs> Uh, so I have to give it a thumbs down ah. and, <laughs> and then it will let go. Here's 10 ways to tame your snake to make sure that they don't bite you. So when taming down your snake, it's really important to handle them on a consistent basis, but you don't want to overhandle them. There are critical times when you're working with your pet snake where you just want to leave them alone. Really important times is one. As soon as you get these snakes shipped in. Yeah, we got a couple snakes on box here. You really want to set them up inside of their enclosure and let them just kind of settle in because they've just gone from a completely different environment into a completely alien environment. They don't know what's going on and you handling them as soon as you get them in is really going to stress them out and it's not going to help. When you get a new snake in from Mitten Expo or from a store or you get one shipped in from us, what you want to do is you want to make sure the snake eats first. When they're being handled and they might feel scared or threatened, they're not gonna want to eat. And that additional stress from being handled can cause them to just stop eating completely. So it's really important when you get a new snake in to give them time to adjust, don't handle them, leave them alone. And then once they start eating consistently for you, then you can start the taming process. After you feed a snake, you generally want to give them about 24 to 48 hours so that they can digest their food pro properly inside of their enclosure. And after 24 to 48 hours, then you can handle them. A lot of snakes, if they have eaten a meal recently, what they'll do when they feel stressed or if they feel like an animal's attacking them, like this guy might feel like right now, is they'll actually throw up. They will puke up their meal all over themselves or inside of their enclosure, and you don't want that to happen. If they throw up their meal like that, it can throw off the uh, stuff inside of their stomach that keeps them digesting their food properly, and it can cause a lot of issues. Uh, this snake in particular, hognose snakes, they are really well known for regurgitating meals, going to the bathroom all over themselves, doing all that they can to make sure that the other animal leaves them alone. The thing that they think is a threat, they'll do all these crazy things to try and make sure that you don't mess with them. So it's super important, uh, don't handle them after you eat them, uh, you just don't wanna cause that regurgitation. Another thing to keep an eye out for is when a snake's in shed. You'll often see that their eyes will go like a milky blue color. Uh, it's very easy to notice on a lot of snakes, but some snakes like leucistics or albinos, it might be a little bit tougher to see. Um, you do not want to generally try and feed your snake or handle your snake while it's in shed uh, because during those times the snake is going to be more stressed out. It's not going to be able to tell what's going on uh, around it as well because the scales that cover the eye are going to be all blued over. They're going to be very milky so the snake won't be able to see what's going on. It'll have a tougher time figuring out what's going on. It's just going to be all around more stressed. Here's a fun fact. Cupcake was actually really deep in shed when this happened. Did she pick your food, Jenny? I don't know what I'm doing. I'm a professional, I do this every <laughs> Let's say that you've got a defensive snake, kind of like this boa right here. You can hear it's hissing, it's making noise, it might be striking a little bit. So when you're holding the snake, you want to, one, not grab it by the head. When the animal's in the wild and they want to kill a snake, they want to go right after its head. So if you grab a snake by the head, they're going to freak out. They're going to lose their minds because they're scared. They think you're going to hurt them. You do not want to grab them by the tail also because their tails are very sensitive. They've got lots of nerve endings in their tail. So if you grab a snake by the tail, it makes them feel like something's coming after them and chasing them. They don't like that. So you want to support them from the bottom. You want to hold them with confidence and you want to make sure that you do what you can to not make them feel threatened. Okay. I also don't want it to swing around and rail me in the nose. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's cool. You should just... <laughs> Yes! Okay, so this is an Amazon tree boa and Donnie's about to get bit by it right now. <laughs> These guys are a super awesome snake. They are a tree boa, oftentimes wild caught. So if you get them, they're usually not that expensive. They look really cool, so people want to get them, but they can be pretty nippy. So you really need to use the confident grab with these guys because otherwise you're going to get bit and their bites are not necessarily the most fun to deal with. Fish line one. The less sporadic you can be, the more confident you can be when you're going to pick these guys up. That literally is the difference between getting bitten and not. If I start kind of 
not really confident, just kind of, I don't want it to, it looks like it's gonna try to bite me, I don't wanna deal with that. You know, I heard they've got big teeth, I don't wanna get bit, ugh, ugh. Like, that's not what you wanna do. Easiest thing, can I stand up now? Cause yeah. this is really, okay. I just wanna go in. Boom, I might do a spin. Ooh, the spin's fancy. The spin is very fancy, but it changes the attention of the animal. So you know Kevin talks about those long tongue flicks all the time with reticulated pythons and monitor lizards. Same thing for our Amazon tree boas. If you can get those nice long tongue flicks, that's the animal really thinking about what's going on and that's when you're gonna have the most success handling them. So this uh, is a tub that has a king snake in it, a Mexican black king to be exact. You tough. wanna try to do your best to not be associated with food when you're going to grab your snake. So. Sometimes your snake's gonna tell you when it's hungry and sometimes that means it's gonna come out towards you and try to bite you. So you wanna try to turn that off. King snakes are a great representation of a snake that really likes to eat and might confuse you for food at some point in time. So being confident with that animal is certainly very helpful. Also, once you kind of get them up and into your hands, that food response kind of goes away and they're not really as, uh, focused on eating. Although sometimes you get a little cantankerous king that decides, yeah, you know what? That finger looks like something I might want to eat. All right, so another really helpful thing, if uh, if you don't want to get bit by your snake, make sure you don't smell like food. Retain the soap in the hands throughout the procedure. It sounds kind of like common sense, but even, you know, if you're handling a defrosted rodent because maybe you're feeding one snake but not another, uh, you know, if you don't wash your hands in between and you still smell like rodent, Something like this might pick up that scent and go right for you because it thinks you're food. Another thing is if you're thawing out rodents in the same room as other snakes and then you go to just pick up a snake that you might not be feeding at that point in time, it might still try to grab you because it smells food. And especially if you're working with pythons that have those heat sensing pits, all of a sudden it's smelling food all over the place and then a warm heat signature comes in, you're gonna get grabbed because it thinks, oh, I smell food and now something warms in front of me and unfortunately you become the casualty. So this is an adult Mexican black king snake and and uh, he thinks I'm food right now. I'm sorry, she thinks I'm food right now, which is why uh, she's engulfed my knuckle with her face. And uh, it's not the most enjoyable thing at all, but uh, it's not really that painful. And uh, really the only time it's painful is when she decides to move her jaw and then bite again or clamp down again. But uh, as you can see, it's uh, I'm still here. I'm still alive, I'm still breathing. Uh, I'm not crying. Jacob wanted me to cry, but I'm not crying. If we remove that from your hand, how bad is that bite going to be? Not bad. It's going to look like a couple little pinpricks. Um, it, it might bleed a little bit, but you go under the sink, wash it off, and you're pretty much fine after that. You can barely even see that you got bitten. Let's talk about the anticoagulant that's in that saliva. Yeah, so basically it wants me to bleed out. And uh, <laughs> so it's just part of the, the enzymes that are in their bacteria where you're going to bleed. And, uh, you know, a lot of people will uh, squeeze a wound to make it look worse than it is. But in all reality, it's not that big a deal. I'm dying. No, <laughs> it looks like it. Why, why does it look like no. that? No. So this is actually so. OK, so one of the tricks to getting a snake off of you that's holding on is actually if you run cold or really hot water on it. Uh, they'll sometimes let go. It's just like a shock factor of like, oh my gosh. Um, and it's actually works really well with colubrids like that Mexican black king snake. So this is actually a mixture of my blood, that snake's saliva, and the water I use to get it off. So that's why it's all runny like that and it looks absolutely terrible. But I guarantee you if I go wash this off, you'd barely even know I got bitten. We see it now. Oh! It's gone! Oh my god. It's so magic! You guys really shouldn't fear your bites of your snakes. Yes! Yeah. Unless, you know, it's... Yeah, maybe it's a big retainer. Like a, like a big one. <laughs> the big ones maybe need a fear. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's definitely a different scenario getting bitten by a larger snake than a, a little three foot king snake. So what's gonna happen is she's gonna get to a point. Are you filming? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So she's gonna get to a point where uh, she realizes that she can't get her jaw any larger. It's just like any other any other snake. If you feed a snake a prey item that's too large. Um, <clears throat> they'll try to eat it and they'll realize they can't get past a certain part and then they, they spit it out and they, they move on. Um, you know, it's the classic, their eyes are literally bigger than their stomach. Let's do a slip retic next. No. You're like a big one. Like eats my whole arm. Yeah, but like how cool would it be to have a shot of it just like consuming your arm like that? And um, I can get that POV shot. <laughs> oh As I'm God. screaming. 
That'd be so cool. I wish I worked with men. <laughs> so one of the things I was telling Donnie as we were trying to adjust the snake for a decent shot is uh, I can actually feel the muscles of the snake kind of pushing, trying to push my thumb further down. It's actually quite an interesting feel. It's peristalsis, but it's, uh, it's manual peristalsis. Peristalsis. Yeah. What? That's the process in which, so when we eat, we don't ever have to think about our food going down our throat into our stomach. It's a, a, a I forgot what the correct terminology is, but uh, it's an automatic uh, thing that our body does to get food from our mouth into our stomach. So for snakes, they don't have an automatic peristalsis, so they actually have to push the food down themselves. So every time the snake does this and then tries to push my thumb down, I actually feel those muscles doing that. It's uh, it's very bizarre. Some the board the board uh, the board people love this. Probably loving this. Oh yeah, yeah. all so, about it. So if you guys used to watch the reptile channel, you know, cool channel. Um, this is you're into this, but uh, we don't recommend you just do this with your snakes. This was no. This was uh, for educational purposes, right? Yeah. We don't, we don't mess around here. How crazy would it be if I had one on all five fingers? Oh. <laughs> right, I'm good. I'm good. It's I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I promise. Thumbs up. Don't, don't be afraid of snake bites at all. It's not that bad. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and leave us a comment, especially if you like the video. That's, that's when you do all those things. Oh, and here's an outtake. This is Kevin jumping in front of my camera while I'm trying to work and make this YouTube video for you guys. This is my life. <laughs> is that the Walmart shoot cam? It's close. Well, so anyways, I got the amazing book. Don't call me a piece of shit. Look at this. I am taking over. Look at this. This is the dreaded black mamba snake. And evidently, it's, it's actually me. It is. It is. You know, within minutes, death is evident. And your healthcare is not going to help you with this. I gotta turn my camera on, dude. You didn't turn your camera on!